The term Old World Wine has been thrown about by wine writers, sommeliers, and collectors for decades. But what does that really mean? If you ever ask yourself this question, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Reggie Norito, here to help you learn more about wine one sip at a time. In this video, we're going to answer the question of what are old world wines and how are they different from the rest of the wines in the world? Sounds interesting. Let's do this. When people say old world wines, they are referring to wines from continental Europe. And while at the end of the day, it's all wine in the bottle, there are fundamental differences between old world wines and their new world counterparts. Some that are subtle and some that are pretty major. Let's start with the way the wines are labeled. Here in the United States, and frankly throughout much of the world, wines are labeled based on the primary grape used to make it. So whether it's Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir, or Cabernet Sauvignon on the label, we know based on our wine laws that at least 75% of what's in the bottle is from that listed grape variety. In the old world, most of the wines are labeled by their region of origin. Chianti is not a grape variety. It's a wine growing region in Italy. Rioja is not a grape variety. It's a wine region in Spain. You'd have to do a bit of research to discover the primary grape variety in each of these areas, whereas with New World wines, the variety is listed clearly on the label. Another difference is location, or geography. The wines from the Old World come from obviously a different place in the world than New World wines, so it would be reasonable to assume the climate and soil is different too. Much of the climate in most of the well-known wine regions of Europe are continental in nature, characterized by short, hot summers with rain possible throughout the growing season. In the New World, the wine regions tend to be warmer with longer growing seasons and not much rain. As a result, the harvested grapes from the New World tend to have higher grape sugars and reach higher ripeness levels, which translates to riper flavors and higher alcohol levels. The soils are different too. In the Old World, there is a high proportion of limestone in the soil. This results in higher acid levels in both the white and the red wines. Finally, social norms also play a part. Here in the United States, we still treat wine like a cocktail. We're just as likely to see someone at the bar enjoying a glass of Chardonnay as their cocktail of choice as we would see someone enjoying that same Chardonnay with their meal. That's one of the reasons why California Chardonnay has a lot of winemaker manipulations, such as aging in new oak, malolactic fermentation to get that buttery texture and flavor, and so forth. In Europe, you very rarely see people drinking wine by itself. They view wine as part of the dining experience. They treat wine more like a condiment, something to enhance the flavors of the meal, like salt and pepper. Consequently, they gravitate to wines that are more structurally driven. Components like tannin and natural acidity are favored over fruit-forward, oak-laden wines. Winemakers, in an effort to satisfy their customers, will craft wines that are more structure-dominant so that they pair better with food. So, there you have it. Now you know the difference between Old World and New World wines. Neither one is superior to the other. It's just the natural and social environments make for different wines. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll press the like icon. And if you'd like to see more videos just like this, I hope you'll press subscribe. Now, if you have a question about wine that you'd like to have answered, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And it'll give me more ideas for future videos. Until next time, peace out.